Hey everyone, Johnny B here with Johnny B Codes back for our 30 days of API challenge. And this is day six. In the last video, we refactored our code and learned a lot about closures. In this lesson, we are going to learn about something called API keys. So first, let's take a look at what we are going to end up with in this lesson and how we are going to get there, all right? So this is what we're gonna end up with. Um, the first page looks pretty much the same, except we have this learn more button down here. And when we click on it, it takes us to a new view controller that has a table view and shows a whole bunch of different cat breeds. Okay. And this is what we're going to end up with, uh, coming from this lesson. So where are we getting that information? Well, we're still using the uh, the cat API. Uh, this is the same API that we used to get our images, um, but now we're going to use another endpoint. So if you go to thecatapi.com and then uh, go to the docs right here, docs, and uh, you'll see here under breeds, there is an endpoint that um, is list the cat breeds, okay? And this uh, just, returns a list of JSON objects with information about that cat breed. But here at the top, we see something different. It says here, requires API key authentication. Up until now, we've been working with open endpoints, meaning anyone can hit that endpoint and get the data. However, in lots of cases, the API provider needs to lock down some or even all of their API. Uh, this could be for security reasons, monetary reasons, privacy reasons. And one way to lock down endpoints is by requiring what's called an API key. This key is passed along with the network request and tells the server, hey, I'm allowed to access this data. Please uh, let me in, basically. And public APIs uh, usually will have a way for you to obtain an API key as a developer. And depending on the API, this could be as simple as filling out an email or more complicated like having to apply or enter payment information. If it's a paid API, the API key, which is unique to you, is used to track usage and bill accordingly. And this is one reason you always want to keep your API keys secure, because if someone else gets a hold of it, they can make a ton of requests using your API key and just run up your bill. Um, for most public APIs, it is pretty simple to get an API key, and there's usually at least a free tier before you would begin incurring costs. So let's see how we get an API key for this API. So coming back to the home page at thecatapi.com, it shows here you can sign up for free, get your own API key and make your own app. So you can just click right here. You can uh, put in your email and just write a quick app description. It could just be something like demo app for, uh, for cats and then click on sign up and very quickly after you will get your API key in your email. And that is going to look uh, something like this. All right, great, so now we have our API key. Um, before we learn how to use it, let's go over the rest of the breeds endpoint right here, okay? So here we have what is called the schema, okay? And this, um, you'll, you'll hear this a lot when dealing with APIs, it's the schema, it's kind of the model. It shows what is part of the response and what are the types, okay? So we have, we're gonna have an ID of type string, name of type string, all of these strings, and we have some, uh, uh, some integers. Um, let's see if we have anything besides those. So yeah, just, just strings and integers in this model. And then down here we can send a test request so we can uh, get an idea of what we're going to be retrieving back. And we can see here in the results, we have an array of JSON objects with the uh, properties, things like adaptability, affection level, um, description. So this is for the Abyssinian. It says the Abyssinian is easy to care for and a joy to have in your home. Alrighty, so that's uh, kind of what we're gonna be getting back from the API using this endpoint and our API key. And if you scroll back up to the top, here we have the authentication instructions. 
And there's two ways that you could use it. Um, the query parameter, this is the least secure way. Um, basically all you do is you append it as a query parameter uh, to the request URL, okay? So we're not gonna do that because that's not secure. The best way and most secure way is to add it in your request header. So what is a request header? The definition of a request header is HTTP headers let the client and the server pass additional information with an HTTP request or response. An HTTP header consists of its case insensitive name followed by a colon, then by its value. Okay, so a header is just an is just an add-on to the HTTP request. And this is where we're going to put our API key. We set it with a name and the name is gonna be x-api-key and then a colon and then the API key that you got in that email. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna open up Postman and I already have the uh, get cat breeds request here. I'm gonna delete it so I can go through it with you guys again. So here in our collection, I'm gonna do say add request and request name, I'm gonna say get cat breeds and we're gonna save that. And then over here, we're going to, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this portion of the URL from our get cat image URL, since those have the same base URLs. I'm gonna get cat breeds and paste that right there. And then just double checking our end point. Yep, it's just slash breeds. So I'm gonna say slash breeds. And so now we have our URL, but now what we need to do is put in our uh, our authorization, our API key. So the way to do that, you can see here um, that we have some, that we have a space for headers. And this is where we can put uh, any of the headers. So what we do is for the key, we go ahead and we come back to our authentication and that's gonna be x-api key. I'm gonna copy that back into Postman, paste that. And then for the value, that is your API key that you got from your email. So I'm just gonna paste that right there. And now when we make this request, the server, it gets the request and it checks out our headers to see if it has the correct authorization header. It's gonna to look to see if it has the name x-api key, then it's gonna check the value, then it's gonna check against its um, list of approved users. And if it matches, then we're good to go. So let's go ahead and send this off. I'm gonna say send and sure enough, here we have our list of JSON objects that contains the cat information that we were looking for. Very good. Perfect, so we're getting back all these results. We have an array of JSON objects, so we know everything is working. So now let's learn how to do this in our iOS app, in our client app. And I know I said at the beginning that we were gonna get all the way to the table view part, but I think that would run a bit too long, so I'm going to finish this one up here. We have gone over what an API key is and how to add it to the header of an HTTP request, at least here in Postman. In the next video, we're going to learn how to do that in our client iOS app, and then we'll make that table view and display them. All right, I'll see you in the next one.